Hello, Jessica Frost Ballas here with a video for Lawn Fawn. Today I'm sharing a wintry holiday window scene using some of my new and old favorites. So let's get started. Since I've taken stamps and dies from a variety of sets, I thought it would be helpful to show where everything's coming from first. I'm using just the actual window from the window frame die set, the roof from the beach house add-on set, the mini string of lights, and stitched rectangle dies. I've die cut a bunch of lights and placed them in a little bowl on my desk until I'm ready to color them. I've die cut the light strings from silver glitter cardstock, the roof from storm cloud cardstock, the window frame twice from white cardstock, and I've die cut the outline of the window frame from fog cardstock and from a piece of patterned paper from the Let It Shine Snowflakes Petite Paper Pack that I also die cut with stitched rectangles. And I also die cut another piece of that same patterned paper with the same stitched rectangle die for the inside of my card. If it seems confusing now, I promise I'll explain a bit more about how that's all working together as we start to assemble the card later. I also have a scrap of light brown wood cardstock that I'll be using to create the ground of my scene. And finally I've stamped this table from Keep On Swimming, the menorah and lights from Love You Alaka, the Christmas tree, gifts and rug from Christmas Dreams, and I'll be using a sentiment from Merry Messages. To start, I'm blending a little Yeti white pigment ink onto my light brown wood grain cardstock. I like how it softens the brown but still looks like weathered wood. The brown color doesn't quite work well with my color scheme today, but this lighter, almost bleached wood fits nicely. Once I'm happy with the color, I set it aside to dry while I work on the rest of the card elements. I'm coloring all the stamped images with Copic markers before die cutting them with the coordinating dies. I'm using G20, 21, 24, 28, and 29 for the tree, along with reds in the R30s, Y13, 15, and 38 for the tree star and candle lights, and E23, 25, and 27 for the trunk. I use toner grays for the table and cool grays for the menorah. I also ended up not using the rug, so I didn't bother coloring it. The gifts use the same shades of reds and greens and lighter toner grays for a little shading. As you can see, I've stamped traditions from both Christmas and Hanukkah, and I'm using a more generic holiday greeting because my family celebrates both. But you could easily customize this scene to fit your family's traditions. I got the idea for this card from my home. Our Christmas tree sits in front of one of our front windows, and we have a light-up menorah that we also use in another front window. So when you drive up to our home during the holiday season, you'll see the tree in one window and the menorah in another. I love seeing the light shining from both when I come home, and I thought it would make a pretty card design.
then it was time to start assembling the card. I started by laying everything out just to see how it would look, and I realized after I started hearing things together that I made a critical mistake. It was fixable, and I'll show you how I fixed it when we get there, but just FYI, the left window panel should have originally been cut from a side folding card base and not an A2 panel. So to start, I used some low tack tape to temporarily adhere the window frame and the outline of my fog gray cardstock. This will be the front of my house. Then I flipped the panel over so the temporary tape is on the other side. I've already die cut the window frame from a stitched rectangle panel of pattern paper and I lay that around the frame just to get a sense of the sizing. That's like the inside wallpaper in my house scene. Since the frame fits exactly into my panel, I needed a way to adhere it so it wouldn't be able to pop right out. So I used two rectangle dies to die cut a small frame that fits around the window panes. You could also use a solid piece of acetate. You can see that when I place the other window frame on the panel, you can see my rectangle frame. However, when I place the pattern paper around the window, it hides my frame. This is a perfect way to build a sandwich to hold the frame in place, but make sure it's not visible. I applied score tape around my rectangle frame and carefully adhered it over the window, making sure not to cover any of the window panes. Then I applied score tape around the other side of my frame and adhered the second window frame over it, using the middle of the window panes to help make sure everything was lined up correctly. I double check the other side to make sure you couldn't see the frame and then remove the temporary tape. Finally, I applied adhesive to the back of my pattern paper and adhered it to the panel. And this was the moment that I realized I was supposed to do this on a side folded card base and not a single A2 panel. And I momentarily panicked trying to figure out how I was going to join things together. Thankfully I realized that I could take a panel cut to 5.5 by 4.5 and, and fold and score a quarter inch on the left side to create a little tab to adhere to my window panel. I added score tape to the right side of my window panel and then adhered it to my amended card base. And problem solved.
Then I stamped a sentiment from Merry Messages on the other stitched panel of patterned paper. I stamped it with VersaFine and heat embossed it with clear embossing powder before adhering it to the inside of the card base, doing my best to line it up similarly to the other side. I trimmed down my wood grain cardstock and adhered it to the inside of the card to create my wood floor. I did have to not let them join together completely in the center as my scored fold would have prevented the card from folding completely flat, but I think it works just fine. If you don't make my card base error, you should be able to join them up closer. Then it was time to start building my scene. I adhered the candle lights behind my menorah, adhered my tree and table, added the menorah, and then finished it with the presents under the tree. I also trimmed the legs off the table that were hanging over the bottom of the card. Next, I added foam mounting tape to the back of the roof and adhered it to my card front. I used a thin double layer at the top so that the panel would tilt a little, giving it more of a slanted roof feel. I also ended up deciding that the front was a little too plain, so I added the snowbank cut with a stitched hillside border. Then it was time to decorate with lights. I temporarily adhered the light bulbs to a piece of low-tack tape and colored them in a rainbow with Copic markers. I used two colors for each bulb to give them a little shading. Then I adhered them to my silver glitter light strings with liquid glue. I adhered two strings inside the house and one on the outside. I love that you can see a peak of the lights through the window as well. I also ended up adding the caroling penguin trio from Here We Go A Waddling to give the front a little more interest. I colored them with Copic markers in the same shades as the inside so that they would coordinate nicely. The blue matches the Christmas lights and is B21, 24, 26, and 28. Off camera, I finished the card by adding liquid stardust to the Christmas lights, tree star, candle lights, and tree garland. I also added highlights with a white paint pen to finish the scene. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'd love for you to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Be sure to subscribe to the Lawn Fawn channel for even more crafty inspiration. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, have a fantastic day and happy crafting. Bye!